Hi, my name is Susan Katz, and I am the author of a number of biographies, and we're going to read today the first chapter of the story of Frida Kahlo. So you'll see I'm dressed like Frida Kahlo, you see her behind me? So um, she had a, what they call a unibrow, where she put all of her eyebrows kind of together. They were like bushy, she didn't pluck them. So it looks kind of funny, but that's how she dressed, right? So you can see her again over there. Um, so I'm going to read you the first chapter of Frida Kahlo, uh, the story of Frida Kahlo, and I hope you enjoy it. It's written by Susan B. Katz and illustrated by Ana Sanfilippo. And there's a dedication in the front. I'll read you the dedication. This book is dedicated to artists like my mom, Janice Katz, and my nephew, Jacob Katz. May color continue to bring out the happy of you. Sorry, to bring the happy out of you, as Jacob says, like it did for Frida. Because my nephew, Jacob, is an artist, and he says that color brings the happy out of him. So you can see the chapter one, an artist is born. Meet Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was no ordinary child. She was very sick and spent much of her time, her time at home in bed. Frida's sisters went off to school, so she was often alone. That's when her imagination would come alive. Frida invented an imaginary friend. She pictured the two of them climbing out of a pretend hole in the window and into a fantasy world where they would go dance and play together. Then, Frida began drawing her imaginary stories. Soon, an artist was born. As Frida got older, she faced lots of challenges. Many things in her life changed. One thing that stayed the same was her incredible imagination. It helped her become one of the most famous Mexican artists of all time. Frida spent much of her life sick and in pain. Painting was Frida's way of showing how she was feeling and sharing her thoughts with the world. Frida loved her country, so she used many symbols of Mexican culture in her paintings. Frida liked to wear fancy flowers. See how I've got my flower hat on? She always wore like fancy flower things and flowing dresses. You can't see, but I also have a flowing dress on. She had many pets, dogs, deer, and even spider monkeys. Frida loved animals, so they fill many of her paintings. Frida was strong and independent. She was born in the early 1900s. At that time, few women were thought of as true artists, but that didn't stop Frida. Women also did not usually work outside of the home, go to high school, or travel. Frida did all of these things in her life and more. We have a little quote at the bottom. It says, painting completed my life. And we have a jump in the think tank, which says, how do you think art, art helped Frida express herself? How does art make a difference in the world? So the next part says Frida's Mexico. It's the next sort of subheading. And there's a map of where Frida is from in Cuyacan, Mexico. Frida Kahlo was born in Mexico on July 6, 1907. She was given a very long name. You ready for this long name? Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderón. So I also speak Spanish, so I said that with the accent that you would say it in Spanish. Her family called her Frida. Frida loved her country for its beautiful people, delicious food, colorful festivals, and tall mountains. As she got older, Frida saw that there were some problems with Mexico's government. The leader of Mexico was not listening to what the people wanted. The Mexican Revolution was beginning. People marched in the streets. Sometimes Frida and her mother welcomed soldiers into their home, the Blue House, for a hot meal and a break from the war. Frida listened to the soldiers talk about how unfair life was for workers. She decided she wanted to help build a fair society for all. Frida's father, Guillermo Kahlo, was a Jewish-Hungarian German immigrant. Her mother, Matilde Calaroni Gonzalez, was a mestiza Mexican woman. Matilde's family was both Mexican Native American and Spanish. Frida was much closer to her father. He was a photographer and painter. Do you see they're out on an outing where he's taking pictures? He also shared her love of art and animals. Guillermo was very kind to Frida when she was sick and loved her very much. Frida always felt like she was his favorite child. Frida's father let her use his paint and brushes. Her parents even had a special easel made for her so that she could paint while lying down in bed. Huh, I wonder why she has to lie down in bed while she paints. We're gonna find out. Frida's path to fame was long and surprising. Along the way, she met and married a famous artist. Later, she had art exhibitions of her own. 
let's find out how Frida healed from sickness and rose to the top. So then we have a little timeline. Have you ever done a timeline? So Frida's dad, Guillermo, is born. Frida's mom, Matilde, is born. Frida's dad moves to Mexico. Guillermo builds the blue house. That's where she lived. Frida is born, and then the Mexican Revolution begins. So this next chapter is called The Early Years. Um, and I'm just going to read you the first few pages so you know why she was painting in bed. Growing up in Cuyacan, Mexico, Frida was born in La Casa Azul, or the Blue House. Frida's house was very special to her because her father built it and painted it. The house was in Cuyacan, Mexico, a village just outside of Mexico City. Frida lived most of her life there. When Frida was just six years old, she got a disease called polio. Frida had high fevers and was tired all the time. She had to stay in bed for months. Polio made Frida's right leg hurt and it caused it to be shorter and thinner than her left leg. She was bullied by the other kids. They called her Frida Pata de Palo or Peg Leg Frida. Frida was sad that she had to stay home in bed, but she was happy that she could spend so much time with her dad. When she got better, Frida and her father went on trips together. The Mexican government wanted Guillermo to take photographs all over Mexico. On their trips, Frida's father taught her how to draw people and nature. Frida's imagination went wild. After each trip, Frida ran back to her room to draw all the beauty she had seen before she forgot it. So you'll find out if you read Frida Kahlo, the story of Frida Kahlo, and later on in life, she has another accident in the bus. She's riding in a bus and it gets in an accident. And because of that accident, she has to be in bed and that's where she starts painting with this upside down easel that her parents made for her. So I hope you enjoyed it and I have a bunch of these out. So I'll show you just a few more of them. So you can see the other ones in the series. There is Jane Goodall and Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Albert Einstein. So there's a bunch more of these. I also wrote Marie Curie and um, Fred Rogers and I have Gandhi coming out as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed.